Have you ever heard the phrase, starving artist? I bet you have. I think it is endemic in our culture. Myths about it, about what it means to be an artist, have been around almost as long as the whole concept of art. There's the, the idea of the moody, erratic, impoverished, starving soul dedicated to painting, living in a garret, painting in spite of a lack of recognition. Throw in a giant old dose of, I don't do math. I can't possibly market my work, and i.e. clueless business person. And the picture becomes pretty unattractive especially to parents of prospective art majors. I used to run into that on a fairly frequent basis when I'd be interviewing students for the program that, that I worked in for, for millions of years. And the parents would be really concerned about their child majoring in art. The truth is those stereotypes don't paint a very realistic picture. They don't describe the reality of the world out there. Being an artist does not require that you give up a sustainable living and starve. It doesn't mean that you have to suffer deeply for your painting or wait until you're dead in order to make an impact with your work. Those myths are just that. They're stories. They're narratives that have become part of our culture and live inside of our heads. It does not have to be that way. They are false beliefs that hold back way too many gifted painters, gifted artists, from creating their own paths to success. I've heard real recently, in fact, in a conversational thread inside my free Facebook group, one person saying, you're not an artist if you sell your work. Another person in that same comment thread, see I'm getting a little excited here, saying, you're not an artist until you sell your work. Do you see those competing narratives? But they're both around this really dysfunctional connection to the whole idea of prospering, sustaining yourself with your art, about being able to create a sustainable life around your art. We got to change that narrative does not help any of us and it holds back way too many people we got to knock that stuff off i'm calling bs on it so instead i want you to think about those myths being stories that there are stories and narratives that we can shift to remember that being a starving artist is not a badge of honor you get to wear over your heart that's going to give you a merit award and extra drinks at happy hour. That is not how it works. You've got to get your creativity out. You absolutely have to make the art that you're passionate about. As Wayne Dyer said, don't die with your music still inside. That affected me so much when I heard him say that, oh, probably 15 years ago, maybe 20 at this point. It means that you both have to make your art and you don't have to starve. The two things are not incompatible. We do not have to choose between creativity and prosperity. That is a false narrative and that's the one we've got to shift. We've got the freedom to choose both. So we have the freedom to choose, and that freedom can be a really powerful motivating force, especially if we apply it and come back to it when we're feeling a little off track or when we feel like that starving artist idea is getting a foothold back inside of our brain. It's also important to remember that making that shift means that you've got a responsibility to act got a responsibility to make that art. You've got a responsibility for your choices. So there are five areas, five freedoms, think of them as, that motivate artists who are successful, who thrive. It's all about choice and control over our narrative around these five areas. Think about, first, the creative freedom. What does creative freedom mean to you? 
I think it's really important that it means making the art that you're passionate about and that they're realizing that there is an audience out there for everyone. So what does creative freedom mean to you? Number two is the freedom around work. In other words, the freedom around finances, freedom around how you make money. You get to control, we get to control our efforts to make money. We get to decide, are we going to make art to make our money? Or are we going to choose a way to make money that enables us to make art? Neither one is better or worse. They're both equally valid, but we have to make a choice and a decision about that and then act on it. Third thing is time. Time is a tremendous freedom motivator. It's definitely one that motivates me. I want to be in control of how I spend my time. Any of y'all feel that same way? It's a huge one for me. I want to have the time that it takes to make the art that lights me up. I want to have the time it takes to build meaningful relationships with my friends and family. I want to have the time that it takes to go out there and work in my garden. Did y'all know I'm a gardener? I have a huge passion for growing okra. I will bore you to tears on the benefits of growing okra and all the different ways that you can eat them. But I need the time to do that. So the time it takes to make art and make a creative life. You have to know how to prioritize your time, how to organize your time and set it up. You have to make choices about how you're going to spend your time. What are the most important places for you to spend your time? The fourth freedom for successful thriving artists is the freedom of place. It's the freedom to choose to be in the place where you're most productive. I choose to spend most of my time on the coast, in the low country, where it lights me up and fuels my creativity. I like to be where I'm just a few minutes away from the marshes or the ocean, either one. I'm happy either place, but I want to be able to smell it. That's a huge freedom to me. I'm way more productive in my painting when I'm close to the pace, places that I love that are deep connections for me. It's not just me. That's true for. It's true for almost everyone I know who's creative. Last, but definitely not least, number five, the fifth freedom of people. Freedom in our relationships. The freedom, the choice of who we're going to work with, who we're going to spend our time with, who we're going to be around. Because the truth is, being around people who are what I call negative energy vampires, that is tremendously draining. And it will drain your creativity. It'll suck you dry in all of those other areas. It is incredibly important to be able to pick and choose the people that you spend time with, to be able to build relationships with the people who are most important to you in your life. So those five things again, those five freedoms again are, number one, creativity. Your creative output, your creative outlet. Number two, your work, your financial freedom. Number three is your time, your time freedom your time independence. Number four is your place freedom, your freedom of location. And number five is your freedom around people, your relationship freedom. All five of those are super important. And the juice that ties them all together is your overall purpose, your great big ginormous why, the thing that is the thing that lights you up overall. That is what, my friends, leads to a life as a thriving artist. It is not about making $100,000 a year or living in New York or having a Ferrari or living in a ginormous estate. It is about having choices 
in those five areas and choosing to create the life that you want to live. We have choice, but it comes with responsibility. Remember that we, as Seth Godin said, freedom and responsibility aren't given, they're taken. What does that mean? It means we got to step up. It means you have to take action. If you want to change that narrative, if you want to change your narrative around what it means to be an artist, whether it means you're going to be the starving artist in the garret who can't sell art or who isn't an artist because they sell their art, then you've got to reshape that. You've got to start making conscious choices and decisions around those five areas, those five freedoms. Take that first step. Think about what it is that you want to shape your life into. How do you want to express your freedom? How do you want to express your creative life? How do you want to rewrite your story? We get to choose. You have to decide how you're going to define your thriving artist's life. You get to choose your creative freedom. You get to choose your work freedom. You get to choose your time freedom. You get to choose your place freedom. And you get to choose the people as well. Think about all five of those things. And if there's somebody else that you know of who needs to hear this, pass it on down the road. Talk to y'all again soon. Happy painting, everybody, and paint on.